Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Uh, you blessed and highly favored. Praise be to God. This is the night the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Because we have a wonderful choice. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, as we are worshiping, thank you, Master. And after worship, as we were praying in the Spirit, the Lord showed me a strong wind from God. It's still a part of the first world wind. He said, I'm increasing the first world wind that was come to expose everything. And I'm telling you, I saw roofs, roofs being torn off of buildings where the darkness has been hiding. I saw treasures being sucked up from these buildings and brought forth. It's a destructive whirlwind against the wicked. And he said, we're going to hear about this whirlwind in a few days from now. Many of these things are going to be occurring. And this is a global whirlwind. You know, one of the things that we want to do is constantly arm individuals spiritually. Amen? Without spiritual warfare, you have no success. So we want to raise up warriors that are constantly ready to battle. In season and out. They're not led by how they feel. They don't stop their warfare. They're first strikers. So what we want to do is constantly arm people with a penetrating prayer booklet. Amen. This is a weapon. Because it's the word of God. These are prayers. And we also want to arm people with knowledge. You know, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, right now, we have so much antichrist spirits that have invaded individuals and organizations, political, media, and so forth, that you cannot deny it. If you've been born again, you can't deny it. If you're truly, if you claim to be a Christian and you can't see it, you ain't born again. That's bottom line. You're in trouble. And so, in this, we want to be able to arm people. Now, they're, they're really trying, they're really forcing. Now, we have a, uh, a, a city a mayor, or whatever he is, yeah, who's a, a Democrat, and, and he's wicked. Let me tell you, they're all stinking wicked. Every Democrat in office is wicked. I hate to tell you. Hello. Does everybody understand? They are from the regime of Antichrist, whether they know it or not. They are murderers, liars, cheaters, extortioners, and promoters of death to the unborn. So anybody that would vote for them will be charged like they will be charged before God. They will not get away with it. So in this, now they're trying to really coerce people into taking the vaccination. Does everybody understand that? They're trying to coerce them. In other words, if they have signs. If you haven't been vaccinated, you must wear a mask. Wearing a mask is coercion. Does everybody understand that? If you have to wear a mask because you haven't been vaccinated, that's coercion. In other words, they're causing, they're forcing you. And they can't do it. It's illegal. People are losing their jobs because of coercion. Does everybody understand that? And people are accepting it because they're being destroyed for lack of knowledge. So, I have a legal notice for you tonight. And you can uh, get it on our website. Viv is going to put it up on her an eternal library. It's a legal notice, and it says, by the authority of the Nuremberg Code on medical experimentation, I do hereby exercise my right to refuse to submit to or to administer the, the COVID-19 experimental gene therapy injection. There, 
theretofore, theretofore known as the COVID-19 vaccine. The United States government is ex extraterritorially prosecuted, convicted, and executed medical doctors who have violated the Neumenberg Code on medical experimentation. Adders and abettors of Neumenberg crimes are equally guilty and have also been prosecuted, convicted, and executed. This is a law. Every court of law in any location has original jurisdiction, universal, to hear and try crimes against humanity. And violations of the Neumenberg Code are classified as crimes against humanity, which carry a maximum penalty of death. You are hereby put on notice that any further effort to coerce, intimidate, uh, persuade, trick, or compel me to receive any experimental gene therapy injection, COVID vaccine, or any other medical device, drug, or procedure against my will implicates you as aiding and abetting in the capital offense of a crime against humanity. I hereby reserve my rights to swear a criminal complaint against you in the nearest available law enforcement agency or court of law. I do not contract with you in any way and expressly deny any contractual relationship with you. This is a legal document that if you are forced in any way or coerced in any way to accept this vaccination, you have a legal lawsuit. Does everybody understand that? You have a legal lawsuit against these individuals, doctors, governors, mayors, principals, teachers, whoever's trying to coerce this. You have a legal document to bring them in court and sue them. And if they are found guilty, they can face death. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of it. And everyone else should be tired of this. Kids cannot sit in classes wearing masks all day long. It's wrong. And they should not coerce them into it if they don't have a vaccination. These parents should go and get these, these notices and bring them, sign them, and get them to a legal court. And stop this. It's time the body of Christ stop wimping. You know, we're in this condition because the body never stood up. The body should have been in all of the political positions. We wouldn't be in this. Believe me, if I didn't have a record that I had, I would have been running for president. <laughs> Probably running out right the front door, but anyways. <laughs> anyways, uh, to God be the glory. Again, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? And people need to start standing up. And I'll quit sitting down and letting somebody else do it. You do it. And all these families, all they do is they go and complain on Facebook, but don't do nothing about it. Well, now they can. There's a legal document right here. Amen? How many of y'all know we're on Bower time? That's a pretty wild phrase, isn't it? Bower time? Who are they bowing her from? God. <laughs> Why? Because time is running out. And I want you to know that the end of time is coming to an end. And that's tonight's teaching. So you can all go home. No. <laughs> Everyone say end of time. Revelation chapter 1. Glory. <laughs> Revelation 1. If we have to suit them out of position, then we will. We need to vote them out of position. Amen? Amen. 
Hallelujah. You know, God gave the earth to the body of Christ. They're not doing a very good job at it. Verse 4. Let's speak of John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And has made us kings and priests to his God and the Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end of time. Says the Lord. Who is, who was, and who is to come. The Almighty. The beginning and the end of time. See, designated time. In other words, he said, I am the Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning of time. Amen. God designated a time and a time that will complete an agenda or mission that he is predestined. He knows the exact last day. He knows the end of time. Amen. But for individuals, there's also borrowed time. We don't know when our time is going to end. Amen. It could end tomorrow. It can end tonight. So there's a uh, 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 end of time for individuals involving individuals, nations, the earth, and even creation itself. Now, time never stops in movement or momentum until the end of the time. It's constant. You can't, in other words, it, it, it keeps going. While we're sitting in here, we've been here for so many minutes. That time is gone. Amen. In John chapter 5. In verse 24. So time is actually active. We are also moving in time. All the universe is moving in time. In John 5, 24, let's speak it most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him the authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming. In other words, the time is coming. When you see hour, it's always associated with time. So the time is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and to those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So it's the end of that time for those individuals. I can of myself do nothing as I hear I judge and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. So we know that hour means a time that is designated by God. A judgment at the end of time in all creation existing, with all, even all the existing rules that maintain and hold creation. Which are attached to the time everything will be removed. Amen? Everything. When it's an end of time, it's, it's over with here. 
everything will be removed. So there's something about what Jesus just said. He said, don't marvel at this. Uh, but I, I can do nothing of myself. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will. I don't seek my own will. Jesus did not come to seek his own will. He came to seek the Father's will. That means God's time. Amen? Not self-time. So in this, what the enemy tries to do is steal God's time. And if he can keep us in a state where we're out of time with God, it can harm us. Amen? And we talked about this before. Because when you're in time with something, everything runs smooth. You, you have a car that's out of time, man, you know it. And everybody else around you knows it. So we want to walk with the Lord. We want to be led by the Spirit. And we're not looking to do our will because when our will starts to jump in, it moves us right out of time. Romans 8, 18. The world is in a hurry to end. They don't even know it. Does everybody understand it? See, me and you, we don't have an end. The world has the end. It's creation has an end, but you and I don't have an end. But it's amazing how people are trying to get places real quick and be successful real quick, thinking that they can just rest the rest of their life when they really don't. Romans 8, 18. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. For I consider the sufferings of this present time, this present time that we're in, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be what? Revealed in us. Hallelujah. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the who? Sons of, even creation, all that the God has created is waiting for me and you to come out of the cocoon. Amen? Hallelujah. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious <laughs> children of God. Glorious liberty and freedom. For we know that the whole world, the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Not only that, but we who also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope. See, we were waiting for that glorified body, man. Hallelujah. But hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance of what we call patience. So we wait for him with diligence. We know that the sufferings of this present time will pass in us into the future because we're going to leave this present time. You and I, even though that's a present time, it's a constant time, but we move away from it all the time. Amen? We're not stuck in present time. Many people are stuck in present time even though it's moving. They want to stay there. So then what they do is they live in the past because of that present moment. And they never advance. They're still stuck there. And the more time goes on, goes on, going on, they're still stuck. And they get further and further and further away from their call, purpose, and destiny. 2 Peter 3. And verse 10. Glory. 
Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election. Sure, for if you do these things, you will what? Hallelujah, I need to go in the right place. Snap. Verse 10, let's try it again. But the day of the Lord is, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be what? Burned up. That's called end. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness, what? Dwells. Thank God. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot, and what? Blameless. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to him be glory both now and forever and ever. Again, the day of the Lord will come to an end. It will be an end, a segment of time that will end. Amen? And, and so that we can enter a process of the rest of the ending. It's amazing how God has segments. You know, we have the Feast of the Lord. All of those are associated with a time sequence. There are seven feasts of the Lord. Every one of those will be fulfilled. When the final feast of the Feast of Tabernacles is fulfilled, the end is right afterwards. Does everybody understand that? So when you understand the Feast of the Lord, it's totally, because God has already, so he's told us. But only Jesus can fulfill the feast. Amen? So we know that the first four feasts have been fulfilled. The next one is the Feast of Trumpets, which will remove the church. And then judgment will come on the earth. Amen? Judgment's going to kick big time. In John chapter 10. In verse 7. Then Jesus said to him again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And all who ever came before me are thieves. What's the thief do? He steals. Amen. And robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Very, very powerful. So we know that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Who's the thief? The thief is the devil, evil forces, demons, so forth. They're all the kingdom of darkness. They come to steal, uh, kill, and destroy anything pertaining to the kingdom of Christ. Anything pertaining to it. But one of the things that they want to do individually is first try to steal your identity. The second thing they try to steal is God's time. Does everybody understand? Do you get that? God's time. What? God's time in your life. 
They want to steal that. They want to get us busy on something else. They're trying to steal God's time from us. That means not doing God's will. Not fulfilling your call, purpose, destiny. Then you're filling the will of the enemy's time. Is everybody okay? They want to what they call consume your time away from God time. So they're actually stealing your God time. So prior to BC, our God time was usually out of hell. Oh God, I'll never do it again. There was a moment of God time. <laughs> we had, you know, little lights of God time. But now we're the light of God time, amen? Now we're in God's time. But that's what the enemy does. He comes to steal or consume your time away from the true God time. That's why he meets you every morning. The devil will meet you every morning when you get up. He's got a list for you. So he can refocus your thinking instead of going to, going to the Lord first. Then you think about work. You think about all these other things. and uh, nah, 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 nah. The next thing you know, you're on the bus going to work. When you haven't spent time with the Lord. Now the enemy just stole it. Amen. Now, this is where you have to make decisions. What's more important, God time or earth time? Hallelujah. And Daniel chapter 7. Hallelujah. Worthy is your name. Daniel 7 verse 23. Then the angel of the Lord said to Daniel, and he's going to explain to him about what he saw. He said, the fourth beast will be the fourth kingdom on the earth, which shall be different from the, all the other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. Is everybody there? Okay. 7.23. Daniel 7.23. 24. Then the ten horns are ten kings who shall rise from his, this kingdom, <clears throat> and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. In other words, he's going to backstab everyone. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High. Shall persecute the saints of the Most High. Sounds like right now, to be honest with you. And shall intend to change what? Times and laws. In other words, they don't even care about the Constitution. They're trying to change it all. They're trying to change Congress. They're trying to change the judge. All of these laws are trying to change right now. Even the election laws. We don't care whether you have ID. We don't care what country you come from. We don't even care if you're a U.S. citizen. Come on in and vote. Wrong. Then the saints shall be given into his hands. For a time and times and half time. Which means three and a half years. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole earth shall be given to who? The people of the saints of the Most High. So it's coming. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. This is the end of the account as for me, Daniel. My thoughts greatly troubled me, and my confidence changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Again, they're trying to change times and laws, or altering, or manipulating, or what are they doing? Stealing God time. 
in any way that they can. Ephesians 5. You know, did you ever see an hourglass, you know, when you turn it over and it's just dripping the sand? It's amazing how they had that little thing calculated so that it becomes one hour or goes through it. We are in the hourglass now. We're in the last days. And that, I, but it's a big hourglass. Time is running out. And time will come to an end. So we need to utilize the time that we have and quit wasting time. Amen? Especially wasting God time. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Let's speak it. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. That means doing his will. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. But rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then he works circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming, everyone say redeeming, the time, because the days are what? Evil. Redeemed time is what time is, what the lost time God's caught for me and you. That's called redeemed time. So what he's done is what he's caught, remember I shared with you last week, whatever, that he's there, the river was underneath him. And, and the flow and the wind. And he was catching lost time. When he catches lost time, when he chooses to deliver it to his children, it's called redeemed. It's called what? Redeemed. So what we want to do now is take that time that has been lost, and when he gives it back to us, in other words, he gives us an opportunity for a second chance. Does everybody get it? He gives us an opportunity to get it right. It's called redeemed time. Amen. Now, I got to tell you that not all lost time will be redeemed. Okay, does everybody understand? So don't expect everything to be redeemed because it's been lost. Not all lost time will be redeemed. He will not redeem something that's going to bring harmful to you. He will not redeem something that he sees down the future that's going to be devastating. Amen. Redeeming the lost time... It's, it's collected by God. Uh, it's, to, again, to give us an opportunity or a second chance. Amen? I, and again, he will not redeem lost time that is no longer a part of his p will or his plan for you. How many of you know God can change his will and plan for you? Amen? Just because you're divorced doesn't mean God's going to restore you to the same person. He may not do that. Does everybody understand that? But he will give you an opportunity to marry someone else. Does everybody understand that? And if you want you, anyways. Did everybody get that? Did I say something funny or what? I don't know. Anyway. Same thing with your job. Amen? So you got laid off from your job. It doesn't mean that God's going to redeem you back to the same job. He can try, he's going to always try. Listen, if you're in divine position, if you're utilizing God time, he's going to give you something better. So for some of you, you'll get a better wife and a better husband. And you might have better children. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Philippians 3. Philippians, okay, Philippians 7. 3 7. <laughs> Is everybody there yet? 
God's going to restore this time. <laughs> Philippians 3, 7, let's speak it. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for what? Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Count it as what? Rubbish. So he wasn't trying to catch up bit lost time. Does he? he said, heck, let it go. Yeah. See ya. Glory. Uh, anyways, yet indeed I also counted all as lo loss for excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I do what? I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are, what, mature, yielding, submissive, have this kind of thought pattern. Constantly. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind or thought. In other words, what things were not redeemed or restored of the lost time, let it go. Or the enemy will consume your God time. See, people that are still trying to restore those things by themselves is the enemy stealing God time. And some people will be restored. Not by God though, but by themselves. And it won't last. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 4. End of time. In verse 12. 412. You know how many times have you wasted a lot of money on a vehicle? You know, think about it. When you, when you finally got to the point, you know what, what the heck? I should have just bought another one. Wasted time, wasted money. Again, the enemy loves to consume God time. Let's speak at verse 12. Was everybody there? 1 Peter 4, 12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning a fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are approached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory in God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters. Hello. Why? Because it's stealing God time. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And it begins with us first. What will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. 
Did you ever notice that when you get sick and you're in time out, what, what's the first thing you begin to think about? Catching up. Man, I got a lot of stuff to catch up on. You know what I'm saying? So one of the things the enemy would love to do is to get you sick. So it can steal God's time. Does everybody understand that? It doesn't mean you can't read your Bible and so forth and spend time with the Lord if you're not feeling good or whatever. But some people, look at even accidents and things to that degree. Remember, the devil's doing everything he can to steal God's time. It doesn't matter what it is. So when God's time is stolen, then what happens is an individual falls into a mode of catch-up. Amen? And we don't want to fall into that mode. We must be sensitive and discerning in that area that God has it. Lord, you got it. That's all you need to do is repent for it. Amen? You know, whatever it is. Listen, we always bring, most of the time, we bring it on ourselves. Amen? You, you could have eaten something that caused whatever. You touched something, whatever, something unclean, whatever. It doesn't, however it is. But if your immune system is built up, you usually overcome quick. Amen? So remember, the enemy wants to put food in your path that can harm you, drink in your path, drugs in your path, anything to steal God's time. He even puts money in people's path so that they're distracted. Is everybody okay? And this is where you and I must discern. What are, we, is, what are we allowing God, what are we allowing the enemy to steal God time from us? And I'm talking about not just sitting with the Lord and whatever. I'm talking about God doing his will. Amen? Doing his will is God time. Praise and worship is God time, isn't it? Amen. We call that the what? Life stream of God. Oh, happy days. So we know that time, judgment is in the house of God to test faith and to test wasted time. That's where conviction comes. He's testing our faith. He's finding a genuine faith and wasted time. Daniel 12. Hallelujah. Daniel 12, verse 1. God designates certain times. In verse 1 it says, At that time Michael shall stand up. The great prince who stands watch over your sons of your people. And there shall be a time of what? Trouble. It's a designated time. Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be what? Delivered. Everyone who's found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, the ones that are going to everlasting life participated in God time. The ones that didn't participated in the world's time. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the what? Time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Knowledge here is technology. Then I, Daniel, looked and there stood two others on one uh, riverside, riverbank, and the other on the other riverbank. And one said to the other man, uh, clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river. Of the what? The river, the life stream. Hallelujah. <laughs> and one said to the man, clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard a man clothed in a linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his hand 
his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time and times and half time. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be what? Finished or come to an end. And I want to close at Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 1. So this is a guideline. Amen? Where we are. Let's speak it. Do not fret because of what? Evildoers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and where there is the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in God time, in the Lord. Amen? And he shall give you the what? Desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. And do not fret, it only causes harm. For evil duels will be cut off, and those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place. But the meek... And in, it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit in the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of what? Peace. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. You know, there isn't anything greater knowing that you're pleasing God. Amen. But when you don't know you're pleasing God, it makes it difficult. Usually when you don't know you're pleasing God, it's, you're not. <laughs> Hello? But when you know you're pleasing God, you usually are. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We're honored and blessed. We thank you for everything. And, Lord, we thank you that uh, time is going to come to an end, but we're eternal. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we ask that you help us to be a sign and wonder to others so that they may escape the end of time and come into eternity, not wasting God time but promoting God time in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. If you want one of these sheets with you, everyone should carry one with you no matter where you are. Take it from here. Amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.